Hey mate, so good to have you here and thanks for joining me. If you're like 95% of engaged couples, not a real statistic, but a bloody good stab in the dark, you are most probably shitting your pants about your wedding photos. So you, my friend, are in excellent company. My good friend and wedding photographer Alex Sesniak from Time with Alex believes that engaged couples can get better wedding photos by doubling down on their intentions and making smart use of their very limited time. Alex shares how you can be way more efficient with your family photos, why reception entrances with your wedding party are the worst waste of time ever, and why he let his mum tell him who to invite to his own wedding. It's a little controversial, and I'd love to know your take on it. So please take a listen and let me know your opinion, especially about the wedding party reception entrances. On the socials, at Unbridly or SpeakPipe, the links are in the show notes. Let's get into it. Unbridly is a community of pro wedding vendors who believe in freedom and integrity in weddings, giving you options, solutions, tips and tricks to create the experience and memories that you and your fiancé really want and deserve. Because we believe that weddings are a team sport. With how-tos, stories and interviews with recently married couples, we find out what went right and what they'd change if they could go back and do it all over again. I'm Camille and welcome to the Unbridly podcast. Hi, Alex, and thanks so much for joining me. Howdy, howdy. We've been friends for a while and colleagues through the wedding industry here in South Australia. But for those who don't know you, can you tell them? a little bit about yourself, where you've come from, what you do. Yeah, I am an introverted extrovert. I live here with my wife, Laura, and my boy, Milo, and our dog was also called Milo. I've been shooting weddings in different parts of Australia, which is cool to say, for the last coming up to six years. I also know that before photography, you're a bit of a teacher. Let's backtrack a bit. Straight out of high school, I worked at McDonald's, every good, pimply young man. Hey, hey, and young woman, I was also a McDonald's graduate, I'll have you know, Alex. There you go, right? A good friend of mine from high school had been living in South Korea for a few years, teaching English. He uh, told me, hey, this is a good way to travel and make some money. And so I said, cool, that sounds like my cup of tea. And yeah, the day that he told me about that, I booked a flight and then walked into the kitchen, told my mum that I'm moving to Vietnam. Wow. Got settled in and then managed to line up some work. I got the job because a teacher was sick that Saturday morning and I got thrown into a room with about 24 to six year olds and was like, teach them. (laughs) I taught for about two and a half years over there did a whole bunch of traveling and then got to a point where I was like, oh, like I think this is what I want to do. I'm good at it. I've gotten positive reinforcement from people. I'll go home, go back to Australia, get my teaching degree and this will be me for, for like my career. And then, yeah, came back, signed up to uni. I was like, man, uni is going to be expensive. How do I like not have a debt at the end of this? And another good friend of mine from high school had photographed weddings in his early adult life. I was like, man, he's got a car, he's got a house for himself, he's got all the things that an adult has. Yeah. And so I spoke to him and I was like, man, can you teach me how to use a camera? I reckon I could have a crack at this. Yeah. So he showed me the ropes and just tagged along on a few of his last remaining jobs that he did and then slowly started to like just look into the world of wedding photography and came across a few people that I really admired and looked up to. Many late nights watching lots of YouTube and learning the ropes and shadowing people at weddings. Yeah, here we are, six years growing up, I think. Weddings are your home, aren't they? I think so. I had a style shoot last week with a bunch of peeps and Wade from Movement Productions was there absolute legend and we were talking and he said something quite profound that I connected with and I'd thought about before as well and just like weddings are just like a really good life reset for you like each weekend 
Because you go to a wedding and you see how people just interact with each other, being around happy people. Sometimes you get the, the odd grump, don't you? But um, it's just it's nice to walk away from a, a wedding feeling I'm coming home to my wife as in love with her as I was two years ago when we stood together in Burbrook Forest. It's awesome. I love it. That's really cool. I really do love I love watching people. <laughs> Like I, I, well, I love sitting back and just and just seeing how people interact with each other. So you and, made that sound and, super creepy, Alex. But <laughs> yeah. But what I think I you're trying to say is that you like observing people. Observing things, yeah, that's right. I love observing things, and I think that just lends itself really well to the mm. style of wedding photography that I love. Yeah. Well, tell us about that. Seeking out those little times between people or even people on when they're on their own just reading a nice note from someone or like I shot a wedding the bride employed someone to write a song for the groom and she got it professionally recorded got it put on Spotify and then the morning of the wedding in her letter to him she said look up this song on Spotify and she bought him like some in-ear earbuds for a wedding gift. And he listened to the song and it was awesome. He was just like, he was gushing. <laughs> and it's so valuable to, one, for the groom to have that reminder of like how it was that he felt in that moment. But also just for like the bride as well, not being there, yes. for her to be able to see his reaction to that. That creates strong bonds between people, right? Because it meant so much to him. And she now has a visual memory documentation, whatever you want to call it, of him so grateful for what she did for him, you know? And that can be used in a time where, like, maybe those guys go through a rough patch, face some struggles. Mm. They can look at photos like that and be like, how good was that? We can get through whatever we're going through right now. I'd love to know what you think, Alex. What do you think makes a good wedding photo incredible? Oh, good photo. Good wedding photo, incredible. When you're looking through your camera... What's the moment you're waiting for? What makes it amazing? Yeah, I think something that just means something to the people in the photo or the people that own the photo. I think something I had to learn on this little journey of mine was that we're actually in like a service-based industry first and foremost, and the art comes second. That's just my opinion. Like I think the art comes second, service comes first. I think I just want people to look at their photos and feel something and I think if they can feel something no matter what the photo looks like that's an amazing photo for me I've done my job but that being said I think people employ us as wedding photographers for our creativity as well you know or some certainly do so I think there does need to be an element of some selfishness in there as a photographer like you need to create work that you love enjoy and get inspired by it as well just as much as your couples Mm. so it's probably like a like two for them one for me approach sure sure but i mean if i'm a couple and i don't just want photos i want incredible Mm -hmm. photos yeah how do i get more incredible photos i think collaboration plays a really big part in that like one thing i always ask couples when they come to meet me for the first time is like are you guys photo people 95 percent of the time dare i say 99 percent of the time they're like, hell no, like we like are shitting our pants. Like I can swear on here, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Alex. <laughs> My mum's gonna be like, Alex. Oh, that's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> yeah, like we're crapping ourselves. That's just helped me come to the conclusion that photos aren't about how you look, they're about how you feel. And so my role as a photographer, I think when I'm with people, is to create a space for them to feel good. And I think my love of just observing people and finding human beings really interesting meld really well. So that's kind of like the foundation for me when it comes to collaboration. That's the first thing. It's just like forming a friendship and that's all done before a wedding. Yeah. Like Alex, our friend, is rocking up with a camera, not this hired help. And then for them, I think it's just like really important for them to be intentional just understanding what it is that they want for their day honing in on that thing and not diverting from that no matter what they can invest themselves 110 percent in their wedding day and do the things that they want to do and that day will give back to them tenfold my job then is just so easy because you've just got two people 
having the best time doing the things that they want to do, it's nearly impossible for me to take a photo that doesn't mean something to them. And that's what it's all about for me. It's just like having meaning and making the time spent with people really, really good. Let's face facts. You've always been the planner and the organiser. And your fiancé's eyes glaze over a little when you start talking about the details of your wedding day. But you really need someone to share this all with, to bounce ideas off, and someone who's not going to ruin the surprises, but also be supportive and maybe even offer a different perspective. So when you're needing to get a second opinion about your bridesmaid, your in-laws, or your first dance song, Unbridly Couples is your safe space. Unbridly hosts a private Facebook community where modern engaged couples can share ideas, chat, and solve problems, and generally just get freaking excited about their wedding. We also have a curated list of experienced wedding vendor professionals in there to offer suggestions and tips, insight into how to get the most out of your big day. But with no unsolicited DMs or pushy sales tactics. It's just not what Unbridly is about. So you can search for the Unbridly Couples Group on Facebook or just click on the link in the show notes. I'll see you in there. Alex, we want to know, how can couples use time and intention to get better wedding photos? I'll start by saying time is a really precious thing and... Even in our day-to-day lives, like we're constantly just trying to scrape through and find that extra five minutes that we all wish we had. Like there's just not enough time in the day. So I think that's, it's just really important to, to respect time and know that it's precious and valuable. And so on a wedding day, you've literally got what a bride might wake up at six o'clock in the morning and she'll be done leaving by 11 o'clock at night. Let's do some math. 17 hours. 17 hours to like spend with all the people that she loves, find a whole bunch of really great things to do. We all know wedding days just fly by. So take the time to tell people that you love them, squeeze people extra tight, go get that ice cream that you want to get. Like just do the things that matter to you and tell those things to your photographer so that they can create those spaces for you to feel good and comfortable. Is this something that you encourage your couples to plan for before the day? Good high impact planning comes into it quite a lot. If a wedding day is just like not organized, it really shows up on a wedding day. How? The time on a wedding day that causes the most stress for couples is more often than not family photos. It's the time where you've got your closest people like in the one space with you they're comfortable with saying whatever it is that they're feeling. And that very quickly becomes a shit show because you've just got 20 different voices all given their opinion. And then there you are, like standing like a good little couple, wondering where the hell is my wedding day going? Because I'm, I'm standing here for too long and I'm getting uncomfortable and I want to drink and I want to go to the toilet. And the easiest solution that I've come up with to solve that problem for people is to have a family photo list and have people organizing things and not diverting from the plan, having a rock solid plan for family photos that will make them the most time efficient that you can make it, you know, and all of that's done before the wedding day. That's awesome. Would you advocate for a couple nominating a photo captain? Do you think that's helpful? Yeah, yeah, for sure. A photo captain, photo wrangler is a family member from each side of the families that just knows people by face and name because it's a pretty big potentially unreasonable expectation for a photographer or a supplier to help organise a big group of people that they just don't know. What's the advantage then of having this photo wrangler, person wrangler? I think there's a couple. I think one is it keeps the photographer on side with people because they're not the one that is potentially having to be bossy, get people in the place where they need to be. Because as soon as you start to like rub, you know, Aunt Joan the wrong way. Who's this photographer telling me what to do? He's quite bossy. That's her done for the day. Like she won't feel comfortable in front of my camera. Aunt Joan could mean a whole lot to someone. And if I can't get a really nice natural photo of Aunt Joan feeling great, I think, yeah, that's disappointing. Hey, then there's just the efficiency side of it as well. You know, like those people 
who have been photo wranglers know people and they can just get them where they need to be quickly, then the couple get to the things that they want to do like quicker. What's your process there to make sure that every moment counts? In the first few years of being a wedding photographer, people feeling like there's a certain way that you need to do a wedding. One that I wrote a blog about recently was the idea of an entrance into a reception being the worst waste of time ever. It's a terrible idea. That's a strong opinion because there are going to be people out there who are like, yeah, that's our rock star moment. We want to do that. Totally. Great. But tell us where you're coming from, Alex. Tell us what you're thinking there. Well, like the example of a, a reception entrance is like you've got the star of the reception, MC comes up, he's done his spiel on housekeeping, telling all of the uncles not to smoke five feet from the reception door, toilets around the corner, there's 10 minutes gone. Then MC will be like, we're going to bring in the wedding party and each person gets there, like one minute of fame. And then there's 14 people in the wedding party have had their one minute of fame. Mm. There's another 10 minutes gone. That's bad math. It'd be 14 minutes, wouldn't it? What I'm hearing is that you're advocating spending more of your wedding day, let's say it's the 17 hours we were talking about before, more time doing the things that you really love with the people mm. that you really love, so then you're taking more photos of what they really love. Yes. Yep. It's as simple yeah. as that. Yeah. Maybe a, a nice way to think about it would be, like I said before, like giving each thing that you do on your wedding day that 110%. And if you're not prepared to give it that 110%, then potentially it's something that you should really sit down, chat about and be like, do we want to do this? Do we need to do this? Imagine if there was a wedding day where a couple threw themselves 110% into everything, like every little situation. That'd be amazing. I want to be at that wedding uh, for sure. Imagine that. Yeah. I know It sounds insane to say it out loud, doesn't it? Because I'm pretty certain that every couple that gets engaged who plans a wedding goes, that's what our wedding day will be like. Mm. But somewhere between getting engaged, starting the planning and the actual day itself, the couple gets a bit off track. Yeah. So they, they get stressed in their planning, I mean. I think so. But also, I feel like people get in their ear a bit. Yeah. I had that for my own wedding day. There were people from the earlier years of my life, like teachers and in my life when I was a lot younger, that my mum really wanted me to invite. And initially, in my mind, there was quite a bit of pushback. I was like, man, I, just, like, I don't see these people anymore. Why would I have them at my wedding day when I don't really have relationship with them right now. So I think the thing that got me over the line for that is because I really love my mum. <laughs> you know, like I love her to death and I really wanted for myself for her to have a fantastic day on my wedding day. Like I did it for her. And I think that's okay to do, but you really got to sit down and think about it and make sure that your reasons behind something like that are at the baseline, like really what you want. Yeah, it needs to be a conscious and deliberate decision rather than an accident due to circumstance. If you're sitting there and going, yeah, mum's going to be really annoyed if I don't invite these people, like I'm going to invite them to appease her, that's not the right reason. Absolutely. Where can people find you? Search up timewithalex.co on all of the social channels, Instagram and Googles, you'll find me. Bye-bye. That about wraps it up for this episode of the Umbradley podcast. For the links and resources we mentioned, please head to the show notes. And if you love the show, please review and subscribe on the podcast platform you're on now so you don't miss out on a single episode. Thanks so much for listening. And remember, weddings are a team sport. Catch you soon. <laughs>